welcome to Oconee State Bank's 40th anniversary. What an exciting year this has been. We'll start this program with some words from our president and CEO, Amory Hardin. My earliest recollections of Oconee State Bank was as a kid here growing up in Watkinsville. Uh, Saturday mornings was the morning that uh, my family did the banking, went to the grocery store and did yard work. And I remember very vividly uh, when my father would take me with him to the bank, uh, that the bank was a beehive of activity, uh, very much like it is today. Uh, people doing their banking business, uh, Mr. Borden uh, visiting with friends and neighbors, and friends and neighbors visiting with each other. And uh, I remember that just like it was yesterday. And I think that that's uh, benefited uh, us today is that so many of us remember uh, what Mr. Borden and Mr. Rabbit, Hardigree, and all those uh, citizens back then when the bank was started, what they wanted in a bank. And uh, that that's, uh, has stayed with me uh, for all these many years. I remember uh, those early years uh, in the mid-70s uh, here at the bank uh, as being a, a very exciting time. We had, um, when I joined the bank, there was only 12 employees, and I remember the total assets were between four and five million. And um, we had a, a tradition that Mr. Hubert started, and uh, every time we grew uh, total assets by a million dollars, uh, he would treat, or the bank would treat, all employees and their spouses to a steak supper. And uh, back then, of course, uh, uh, we were lucky if we got uh, one uh, steak supper a year. But as the county continued to grow, so did the bank. And it uh, wasn't too many years after that that we had to uh, uh, discontinue that uh, tradition because it was, uh, the bank was growing a number of employees and also we were growing more than a million dollars a year and, and we were having, would have had too many steak suppers in a year's time. Uh, but I have uh, seen a lot of changes here at the bank, and they've all been good. Uh, I've been real fortunate to, uh, uh, to work my way uh, through the uh, organization, and uh, in 1994, uh, I was uh, honored by being uh, elected the president and CEO of Oconee State Bank. In the late 50s, Oconee County had been without a bank since the 1930s as a result of banks failing during the Depression. The citizens of the county had to travel to Athens to do their banking. Uh, during that time, the county was still an uh, agricultural-based community. And most of the employment was related to farming. But the county was growing, mainly due to the influence of the University of Georgia. Hopes, plans, and dreams of many. That was the comment made by the editor of the Oconee Enterprise in their November 13, 1958 issue about a meeting of 20 interested citizens that was held at the Oconee County Courthouse. The article contained a quote that a bank was necessary for a growing community. As a result of that first meeting, a steering committee was formed and set about the business of making application with the state of Georgia and selling stock. They wanted to sell 600 shares at $150 per share. The steering committee members were A.W. Green, B.A. Thomas, Charles Henry Murrow, W.A. Thomas, C.G. Hardigree Sr., Robert M. Nicholson, H.T. Hodges, Herman C. Michael, Frank E. Stansel, and William H. Breedlove. Joe Adcock, Bernice Lord, and Reba Hammond reflect on those beginnings of Oconee State Bank and how it came about. The thing that I remember about how the bank came, I was coming out of the courthouse and Herbert Hammonds was the ordinary. And he told me, says, we're going to have a bank. And I says, when? I said, well, we're starting, getting it started now. So that's the first I'd heard of it. And then I saw Mr. Rabbit Hardigree in the drugstore. And he uh, asked me if I wanted to buy some stock. Well, I didn't have much money. I told him I'd see what I could get up. 
got up enough to buy three shells. And most people would buy ten, but that's all you could buy, you know. The people began to move in here, you know, in the late 50s and 60s from up north. And Mr. Frank Stansel was a county agent at that time. They call it something else now, you know. But he, people would come by his office. They would ask him, where's the bank? You know, they moved in here. So, well, we hadn't got a bank. We need to go to Athens. He said, nearly ever, all the people that came in would uh, ask him, where's the bank? And he said he came out of the courthouse one afternoon when he closed his office, and Mr. Hardegree was coming out of his office on the corner. And he asked Mr. Hart, said, Mr. Hardegree, can I see you a minute? He said, yeah, come on in. And he sat down and said, he told him, Mr. Oder said, look like we need a bank. People's coming in here, I want some bank. And he said, Mr. Rabbit said, well, I think that's right. And said, we'll have to get somebody to head it up for us. And Frank said, well, who are we going to get? He said, how about you? So Mr. Frank was with a federal job. He said, no, they wouldn't have that. I don't really remember who they got to head it up, but everybody got selling stock. I talked to people about it, you know, everywhere I went, you know, in the, all over the county. And the people in Athens that owned the banks, we got words. Well, they'll last about a year and they'll close, you know. But it went real good. I didn't know anything about an Oconee County bank being established until someone approached me about buying some stock. So I talked to this friend of mine about it and asked her what she thought I should do. She said, well, Bernice, you might make a little money and then you might not. So that's just going to be up to you. So I bought the stock and time rocked on. And in a few years, the stock split. And several people whom I had a great deal of respect for asked me about buying my shares. So I got to thinking to myself, if they want that stock, it must be pretty good, so I'll just keep it. And where I really know it through my husband, he was at, excuse me, in the courthouse. And there's so many of the people that was moving in here, I think, came in and ever so often don't know where the bank was, and they just have to tell them they didn't have one. So I think that was really the reason that they, some of the gentlemen got together and got it established. I got all the work done for it. At that time, I was just hearing about it through, through Herbert, you know, he, would, he was so excited about their trying to get one here and then when they got started working on it and and then um, I think it's I mean, this you know, in April the 24th <clears throat> 1959 it came out in the Enterprise with this picture here where uh, where they had appointed they had gotten far enough along they appointed uh, the steering committee appointed the first bank directors, and this is a, a picture of that. And he was so glad the day the bank opened. Uh, he did realize it, and he's, he was in the hospital, and he said, well, today is the day the bank's opening, isn't it? And I told him, yes, it's February the 1st. And he said, well, I know that bank's going to succeed. And it did, and we're so proud that it did. By the early part of 1959, the steering committee had been very successful in the sale of the stock. In fact, they had sold 750 shares to almost 100 citizens. In the late part of November of 1959, the bank was on the verge of being ready to open, except the state officials wanted an experienced banker to be hired to help operate the new bank. That person that was hired was Guy Borden, who came here from Dawsonville, Georgia. The bank was going to be located in what was Jim Booth's drugstore. Uh, Jim had to relocate his store to the opposite corner of the courthouse, 
and the bank was going to open with total capital in the amount of $125,000. The first board of directors was elected prior to the opening of the bank. It included H.T. Hodges, A.W. Green, W.A. Thomas, J. Swanton Ivey, Charles Henry Murrah, Herbert M. Hammond, Mr. Guy E. Borden, W.C. Hale, Robert M. Nicholson, C.G. Hardigree Sr., J. Phil Campbell Jr., William H. Breelove, and Hubert Wells. Opening day was February 1, 1960. The doors to the bank was open for business. Guy Borden was named cashier, and Rosella Hansford was hired along with C.G. Hardigree Jr., C.G. Hardigray Sr. served as the first president of Oconee State Bank. Rosella Hansford, C.G. Hardigray Jr., and Carol Tony, early employees at Oconee State Bank, share some interesting stories and comments. And before I came to the work at the bank, I had been working with Talmadge Wholesale in Athens up until a few months before my daughter was born. That's when I left there to have my daughter. And I remember hearing that the bank was employing, looking for new help at the bank. So I wrote a letter to Mr. Borden and Mr. Hardigree. I addressed it to both of them. And I told them that I was very happy to hear that Oconee County was going to have a new bank and that I was interested in working for them. And the next thing I knew, they had called and asked me to come in and talk to them. So Mr. Rabbit and Mr. Bowen was the two people that hired me at the bank. But it, it, it was very nice to begin with. Uh, we didn't have a lot of help. We had a lot to do. We worked in the bank two weeks before the bank opened, trying to get everything ready and in order like we wanted it. Well, our degree was working with us, helping us post in the afternoon. We had two different posting machines. We had to post our copy for the customers to send them each month. We had also post a copy to keep at the bank. At that time, we mailed out statements once a month. Well, back in the early part, days of the bank, we did not have a restroom there where, on the corner where we were, and we had to go back and forth to the courthouse. And we had uh, mail-in deposits to come in. <clears throat> and I'll never forget one lady in particular had mailed in a deposit. And we worked it up for her and sent back a receipt. And she called in and said she'd had a $20 bill in there that she did not get credit for. So Bo and me knew the lady well enough to not doubt her. So Bo had a degree and me was out there on the corner in the trash can rambling through looking for the envelope that had the latest $20 bill in it. But we found it and gave her credit for it. So my father asked me to help, help out some up there. That, and uh, so I was doing some part-time at work as teller. Uh, I was just a gopher and the bookkeeper and teller and uh, also a courier. Uh, I'd run to Athens maybe once or twice a week, depending on the needs, and pick up fifteen or $20,000, which at that point in time was a lot of money. Uh, you know, I, there wasn't all that mugging and all that much crime going on around there. I'd run over there and pick up money and throw it up under the seat and maybe run by the varsity and pick up a hamburger, you know, before I came on back. Of course, I'd go to the drive-in. And... Uh, but fortunately, we had, we had some good people, had Mr. Borden, uh, we had some good directors, and the bank had prospered. Uh, matter of fact, it started operation in the black and has never, uh, from the time of its opening, had never been in the red. When the bank started, the, uh, there was an old cannonball safe in there, which is now out in the lobby of the main bank here. Uh, that the bank used as a safe to go in, in the vault. The, uh, they had had several locksmiths try to work on this safe to get it open. It was, it was locked and it, nobody knew the combination. And uh, a couple of unsuccessful attempts and they finally got a hold of a gentleman over in uh, North Athens over there. I can't remember his name, but he was kind of a uh, 
shall we say, a loose character, you know. I think he'd maybe spend a little time in the, in the pokey for safe cracking and that type of thing. They got him out here and he opened the safe. It took him about 30 minutes. And I worked for the bank for 35 years. I retired in 1997. Uh, before I came to work at the bank, I was going to the University of Georgia. I had gone three years. I was majoring in physical education. And I heard about the, uh, the bank needing another employee. So I came and talked to Mr. Rabbit Heidegree. And he thought that confidentiality, I remember the conversation I had with him, he thought that confidentiality was very important. And he, I remember him telling me that if a customer comes into the bank and wants to know his balance, to write it down on a piece of paper and hand it to the, to the customer. So I think that that has stuck with me all through the 35 years of banking at Oconee State Bank and working with Oconee State Bank. Well, we in Oconee County and Watkinsville, we knew everybody at the bank and we knew everybody in town. And so when a stranger came into town, we always knew that that was a stranger. So one afternoon, we had already closed the bank, and we heard a knock on the door. So we, went, we peeped out the window, and there was these two strange men standing there. And we kept questioning them because we were afraid to let them in the bank. We'd let customers in after hours for things back then because we knew everybody. And finally, we found out that they were bank auditors, so they didn't appreciate us making them stand out on the street. Mr. Borden, he was a real character, and I think he is the one that has made Oconee State Bank what it is today. He really practiced the bank of friendly service. He knew everybody's name, and, and he had nicknames for people and customers as well. So he had a laid-back type style of banking, and I think... That is what really put Oconee State Bank off to a good start by hiring him. The first years of the bank reflected the growth of the county. Oconee State Bank, being the only bank in the county, was able to meet the banking needs of a majority of the community. During our first decade, we mourned the passing of C.G. Hardigree Sr. and Guy Borden. Uh, Hubert H. Wells was named president and chairman of the board in 1966. With the growth, the need for a new facility became evident. The site for the new main office was located on the northern end of Town Square, where for many years, Zoo Reveal ran his store. On May 3, 1970, a grand open celebration was held in the new modern main office facility. The open house was attended by many that came to marvel at this new building that seemed spacious at the time. The cost of construction of that new main office was $125,000. By this time, Oconee State Bank had nine employees and new faces on the board of directors, C.G. Hardegree, Jr. and O'Neill Smith. During 1979, Hubert Wells retired as president due to health reasons, and Mel Wells was named president. In the 80s, the growth of the county continued. But it was with the vision of Mel Wells that Oconee State Bank saw its greatest leap forward. Mel came to the bank with a lot of energy along with his vision. As a result of this vision, Oconee State Bank in 1983 opened its first branch at the corner of the Monroe Highway and the Morris Hill Road near Bogart. The Monroe Highway was the county's first four-lane highway and was near the site that had been purchased by IBM. Not too long after that, in the early 1986, a second branch was opened in the Friendship Community on U.S. Highway 441. It was also during this time that Oconee State Bank added two new parcels of land for use in the future. In 1987, we installed our first automated teller machine at the main office, and we called it the Friendly Banker. Here in the year 2000, we now have six ATMs. During the decades of the 80s, we saw the retirement of some of our board members, and new faces came on the board, including H. Dorsey Crow, F. F. Dickens, Frank E. Stansel, Elizabeth Hale, W. C. Wilkes, John Arthur Hale, and Walter T. Evans, Sr. 
It was sad times as well for Coney State Bank. We experienced the untimely death of H. Mel Wells and also the passing of F.F. F. Dickens. Paul Head was named president in 1986 and Doug Dickens was named to the board. In 1986, we saw our total assets hit the milestone of $50 million. The 1990s brought continued growth for the county. In fact, the county was booming, and so was Oconee State Bank. In fact, we started seeing branches of the banks in Athens relocate to Oconee County. With that added competition, we had to work harder and smarter to keep our market share. It was our service that made a difference. From the beginning, we were known as the Bank of Friendly Service. Mr. Guy Borden coined that motto, and to maintain that level of service took everyone's efforts. And for that effort, in 1997, Oconee State Bank was named the winner of the Quality Service Award and named the Community Bank of the Year for the state of Georgia. This award is given annually by the Community Bankers Association of Georgia. This decade brought new faces to the Board of Directors. Ann B. Powers, Jerry Wages, G. Robert Bishop, Virginia S. Wells, Steve Denman, Henry Maxey, and Carl Nichols. In 1999, Oconee State Bank made its first venture into neighboring county of Clark by opening a loan office on North Millage Avenue. This office is able to provide all types of loans, including business loans and home mortgages. On January the 1st, 2000, Oconee State Bank had total assets of $150 million and with several years of back-to-back -back record earnings. We had seen the number of our shareholders grow to almost 600. In late January 2000, Oconee State Bank opened its first full-service branch in Athens. Not only was it a new branch, it was located inside the Walmart Supercenter on the Lexington Highway. The future will bring continued growth for the bank. We will continue to expand, and we will continue to look at other markets for that added growth. The future will bring new ways to the bank. The introduction of Internet banking is on the horizon for us. It will be many, many years before the traditional banking will disappear, but we must prepare for the future now. It is our hopes, plans, and dreams that Oconee State Bank will continue the tradition that began on February 1st, 1960.